Good morning, everyone. My name is Yi Fu Chen. Welcome to my presentation today. First, I want to apologize for not being able to present in person for this year's AICHE meeting because of a scheduling conflict. So I record this video in advance, and I hope everyone is staying healthy and well, and your life has become normal after the last wave of COVID pandemic. Today, my presentation is about sustainable ammonia production from nitrogen or nitrate reduction by electricity. And I will put a major focus on the design of electrochemical reactors for both research topics. First, I want to briefly introduce about myself. I did my undergraduate research in Peking University on the structure activity relationship in the catalytic hydrogenation of carbon dioxide on iridium based catalysts. Currently, I am a fifth year PhD student in Iowa State University in Dr. Wen Zhenli's group. And here in Iowa State, my research has been mainly focused on the electrocatalytic conversion of nitrogen containing compounds, such as lithium mediated ammonia synthesis, ammonia synthesis in molten hydroxide systems, and the electrochemical reduction of nitrate and nitrite to ammonia, and the denitrification of agricultural wastewater. Today we'll focus on ammonia production. As we know that reactive forms of nitrogen are essential to life on Earth, and ammonia in particular is produced in large scale by the energy-intensive Haber-Bosch process in industry with a productivity of around 150 megatons every year. Apart from its primary use as a fertilizer, ammonia is also an ideal energy carrier which possesses higher energy density compared to liquid hydrogen. In contrast to the huge demand of ammonia by human society, its synthesis by the Haber-Bosch process must be performed under very harsh conditions and requires molecular hydrogen from steam reforming of natural gas, which not only consumes energy, but also contributes to 1-2% to of total global CO2 emission. In order to downscale the ammonia production process to reduce the transportation and storage costs of ammonia, as well as to avoid the use of molecular hydrogen, people have proposed to produce ammonia in an electrochemical reactor in which nitrogen is directly reduced to ammonia on the cathode. Ideally, this process is not only sustainable but also flexible because it only uses water, air, and sunlight as the ingredients and produces ammonia in a very compact reactor under much milder conditions compared to the Haber-Bosch process. On the other hand, large-scale ammonia synthesis in industry by the Haber-Bosch process has fed billions of people in the world, but the reactive nitrogen is not returned to inert nitrogen at a comparable rate by the natural denitrification process as shown by the data here. Nitrate is one of the major pollutants in agricultural wastewaters, and the existence of nitrate has caused significant environmental issues such as algae blooms. So many researchers, including us, are trying to develop electrochemical denitrification processes to reduce nitrate into molecular nitrogen and restore the nitrogen cycle. But the problem here is that this process, either in lab or in nature, requires the coupling of two nitrogen atoms and is often accompanied by the production of nitrous oxide, N2O, we know that nitrous oxide has a much more severe greenhouse effect compared to carbon dioxide and methane. Alternatively, an electrochemical pathway that directly and rapidly convert nitrate in waste sources to ammonia through an 8-electron process could supplement the ammonia supply from the Haber-Bosch process and alleviate the environmental impact of air and water pollution as well as the greenhouse effects because it circumvents the production of N2O. So both nitrogen and nitrate reduction has attracted a lot of research interest in recent years. But more recently, we are seeing a very interesting trend that there is a shift in research interest from nitrogen reduction to nitrate reduction for ammonia production. And if we look at the summary of performance in these two figures, we can find that ammonia production from 
nitrogen reduction on the left figure usually has a much lower production rate compared to nitrate reduction in the right figure. And that is because in nitrogen reduction to ammonia process, the formation of ammonia requires proton. But proton itself can also be reduced to form hydrogen at a similar potential. So it becomes a competitive reaction. Well, that is not a significant issue for many nitrate reduction systems. Because of the low activity in nitrogen reduction research, the most important thing should be to confirm the source of produced ammonia by control experiments. And because the proportion of converted nitrogen is so small, it is not possible to establish a nitrogen balance, and the result is solely dependent on the meticulous quantification of produced ammonia at a very subtle level, and that is the sum of possible contribution from all possible sources. But for nitrate reduction, because it has much higher activity, we can usually establish the nitrogen balance by quantifying the reactant nitrate and the products such as nitrate, nitrogen oxides, molecular nitrogen, and ammonia. So the control experiments become not that crucial. The reactive nitrogen-containing species exist widely in the environment and could lead to some inaccurate or even false positive measurements in the nitrogen reduction research. What I show here on the left is the comparison of bond dissociation energy for different nitrogen-containing species and their standard reduction potential to ammonia. We can see that for all nitrogen-containing species including nitrate, nitrite, and nitrogen oxide, the nitrogen-oxygen bonds are much weaker compared to the triple bond in the molecular nitrogen. And the standard reduction potentials are much more positive, which means that even a small amount of these nitrogen species could contribute significantly to the total ammonia production. Experimentally, there has been a few studies to confirm the existence of nitrogen species in many commonly used materials in electrochemistry research, such as the electrolyte salts, the commercial catalyst materials, and the feeding gases. The tricky thing here is that this information is usually not available explicitly from the documents by the chemical vendors. So we can't just assume that one chemical does not contain reactive nitrogen just by looking at its chemical formula. We have to test it carefully. So efficient removal of these nitrogen-containing species should be a primary concern in designing any nitrogen reduction systems. And we also did some investigation on this. Here, I summarize the cleaning procedures that we suggested for the feeding gases, electrolyte salts, and catalyst materials. For the feeding gases, we can use a combination of oxidative, alkaline, and acidic solutions to remove any nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and ammonia. Here, a very interesting thing is that nitrous oxide, N2O, is actually very stubborn and after an exhaustive literature review, we cannot find a convenient and efficient way to remove it. From the batches we tested, we know that it always exists in commercial 15 nitrogen gas. And of course, we can always argue that under a condition that we can activate nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, there's no reason that we can't activate nitrous oxide. So it could be an additional issue of concern. For the soluble electrolyte salts, we can do heat treatment under inert atmosphere to decompose the nitrate and other nitrogen-containing compounds. And for the catalyst materials, we can always do the pre-washing with the electrolyte solution to exchange the nitrate and nitrite ions and reduce their impact. Having all of these cleaning procedures in place, we can now establish a gas circulation system that is specifically designed for nitrogen reduction research and allows for the cost-effective quantitative assessment of the source of produced ammonia. By recirculating a fixed volume of nitrogen-15 gas in the closed-loop system, we can largely save the cost of the expensive 15 nitrogen gas and limit the impact of reactive nitrogen species in the gas compared to the normal experimental conditions in which we feed gas continuously from the gas cylinder. And also, if we want to rigorously examine the performance of nitrogen reduction 
in a flow electrolyzer with gas diffusion electrodes, we also have to introduce the flowing nitrogen-15 gas. Well, in designing the gas circulation system, we took advantage of some previously reported systems in the literature, but we also have some additional considerations. In general, there are two operation modes controlled by the four-way valve in the center. In the purge mode, gas is supplied from the cylinder and after the purification to fuel the electrochemical system. And in the circulation mode, gas is circulated in a closed loop driven by a peristaltic pump. The entire loop is connected by PTFE tubing to minimize gas leakage except for the soft tubing segment at the peristaltic pump. We also included solid oxygen and hydrogen absorbers considering the possible hydrogen evolution and the possible leakage of oxygen from the air to ensure stable operation over a long experimental period. We have confirmed these absorbers are both effective by actively monitoring the content of oxygen and pressure inside the loop during a 12-hour continuous operation. And those results suggest that the expensive nitrogen-15 gas can be effectively confined in our system during long-term experiments. An additional interesting result of our research is a case analysis where we are studying the previously reported ammonia synthesis by nitrogen and water in the molten hydroxide system. We found that commercial iron oxide used in this system contains a very high level of nitrate impurities, and that is the true source of ammonia production in this system instead of the nitrogen gas. This result is confirmed by the long-term measurement under the circulated 15 nitrogen gas. And here I want to say that most of the metal oxides that we found contain a high level of nitrogen impurities are nanopowders and manufacturers use a method involving arc discharging to produce these materials. So there's possibility that nitrogen is fixed in that process, in the production process of the nanopowders, similar to the oxidative nitrogen fixation in the lightning. And now, if we look at the data again in this reactor, if we compare the input of nitrate or nitrite and the output of ammonia, we can find that in almost all cases, this nitrogen recovery, which is the ratio of nitrogen output and nitrogen input, is close to 100% after one hour of electrolysis. This tells us that instead of nitrogen fixation, we can take advantage of the reactor's very high selectivity and conversion of nitrate and nitrite for ammonia production in an alternative pathway. Of course, if we want to do real nitrogen fixation, we can also couple this reactor with mild-conditioned nitrogen oxidation process by cold plasma to achieve renewable ammonia synthesis from air and water, and that is what we are currently doing now. We are also working on the conversion of more realistic sources of nitrogen in the wastewater while further optimizing its conversion rate, selectivity, and fire efficiency towards ammonia. Uh, finally, I have some take-home considerations in designing nitrogen reduction and nitrate reduction reactors for ammonia production. The design principles are obviously different. For nitrogen reduction reaction, it is still an early stage research so any future exercise in nitrogen reduction reaction must prioritize the 15 nitrogen control experiments to confirm the true source of produced ammonia. And we have provided a gas circulation system that can make this process easier, more accurate, and more economically viable. In particular, we want to emphasize that even though we have proper cleaning procedures in place, we still need to evaluate the efficacy of those cleaning procedures for each individual system before conducting the nitrogen reduction research. Furthermore, from the perspective of reactor design to improve the activity of nitrogen reduction, we can propose to use a flow electrolyzer based on the membrane electrode assembly with a hydrophobic gas diffusion layer to promote the mass transfer of nitrogen and limit the water content to suppress the competitive hydrogen evolution reaction. And for nitrate reduction reaction, 
We notice that a lot of publications include the results of 15 nitrate reduction to confirm the source of produced ammonia. While these efforts are quite appreciable, they are not the most crucial consideration because we can always, almost always establish the nitrogen balance by quantifying the conversion of reactant. Design of nitrate reduction system should prioritize in improving the performance, including production rate, Faradic efficiency, and energy efficiency. Additionally, we must consider the separation of ammonia, and in this regard, alkaline systems are more preferable because we can remove the ammonia by only applying a mild heat without destroying the electrolyte. Another thing is that we need to consider the durability of the electrolyte because if we look at the equation for nitrate reduction, there is a net production of hydroxide ion. And uh, lastly, we note that the concentrating techniques for nitrate ions is very important because nitrate in typical waste sources such as wastewater is very distributed and has a low concentration. We need efficient concentrating techniques to make sure that nitrate reduction can fulfill the needs for sustainable and distributed ammonia production. Uh, finally, I want to thank our wonderful collaborators and funding agencies of the projects involved in this presentation. I want to thank you again for coming here to listen to my talk. And I want to thank AICHT for providing me this opportunity to present. That will be the end of my presentation today. I look forward to discussing with you about any questions, comments, or suggestions you have. Goodbye and have a nice day.